Hey everyone, I'm Adnan. I'm with the Cube team as a developer advocate. And today I'll be taking you through creating deployments in Cube Cloud. Now, after you do sign up for Cube Cloud, you'll get your own uh, domain just like this one. Uh, it's super simple. Once you do sign up, we get, just send you an email and then you go through the email process, you get your domain. And that's basically it. It's super simple. Now, the next step you have to do is to start creating deployments. Now, it's incredibly simple to get started. The only thing you really need to do is you hit the create deployment button that's on the top right here. And this will take you to a three-step process that we have outlined as a wizard for creating uh, Cube app deployments inside of Cube Cloud. Now, it is super simple here. For step one, you just select a name and you select the cloud platform and the region. Of course, if you have, let's say on AWS, you have EC2 instances. Obviously, you want to deploy your Cube Cloud uh, app inside of AWS as well, just because you want to keep the network latency down in between your services. So make sure to, to, to pick the region and the platform that suits you. Of course, you can also select a dedicated VPC, but this is more for the power users. And if you de do need one, you can just reach out. But yeah, back to the gist of it. Let me just create a simple app. Let's say sample two. Ah. And let's say I have services deployed on AWS in Ireland. I'll just keep that region for now. Now, once I do hit next, the next step is just to select uh, where you want to import your cube app from if you have an existing cube app. If you don't, you can just create one from scratch. Now, because I do want to show you how to do it from scratch, I'll just go ahead and click the, the create button here. And here we get to the database selection. So cube does support uh, a vast number of database. I mean, all of the popular databases on the market today. So uh, just to keep the simple, uh, keep this tutorial short and simple, I'm going to select Postgres and I'll just enter some sample, some sample data a database with some sample e-commerce data so we can hook that up. Now, let me just write that down real quick. Q.dev. And let me add the database and the username and the password. Now, of course, one thing you have to keep in mind is that uh, you have to make sure you have these IPs allowed to access your database. So an example would be if you have a security group in AWS, you need to make sure that these IPs are allowed access to that security group. Otherwise, this won't work. So make sure to get that and then you can hit apply. Of course, this will test the database connection first. And then if it's successful, you'll get to the next step, which is generating the data schema. Of course, this is not you don't have to do this. It's not mandatory, but I would definitely suggest you do um, because it just makes it so easy. Uh, once you select the table you want to generate the data schema from, you just hit generate and it will generate all of the schema files, everything you need, all the measures and dimensions. So you don't really have to set anything up uh, from, from the get-go. Now let's just wait a second for the deployment to spin up. Um, and once it does, we can head into the playground and run some queries so you can see how that looks. Oh, nice. We're back. So now we have a uh, deployment up and running and you can see the resources and you can see the kubejs API, uh, the actual URL you get here. Of course, uh, running in development, this is fine, but I would suggest you switch to the cluster type because this is much more reliable for production. And also make sure to toggle the warm up of pre aggregations before deploying the API. It's also very important. Um, another thing is that you could run roll up only mode, but if you don't have any pre aggregations defined, just keep it off for now. So yeah, let me apply this. And now you can see that you have a ready production grade production ready cluster for your cube app. Lovely. Now let's go and head into the playground and run uh, a quick query just to make sure it all works. Let me select the orders count. Let me do a uh, status. Oh yeah, let's keep the created at. Let's do for this month and let's group it by, oh, let's say a day or so. So wait, let's run this and see how that works. Now, sweet, so we're getting back this order status and we're getting back the count for that status per day. Amazing, just what we wanted. Now. Uh, another few features that are incredibly convenient that you get out of uh, Cube Cloud by default is that you get the schema editor. Now here in the schema, you can see these are all of the schema files you got auto-generated from the get-go. So you get the measures, the dimensions, and all of that. So you don't really have to edit anything except for the pre-aggregations once you start adding them. You also get this super nice query 
query metric so you can view the duration you can see how many queries were run you can see if they were hitting the cache or not so this is super nice very lovely you also get the pre-aggregations view where you can check all of your pre-aggregations you can see how long it took to build them when they were built uh, all of the partitions etc so it's very nice to to have an insight into all of this and you also get quite detailed apm as well where you can see the request the response time you can see the top queries and you can figure out which queries are acting slow or, or not performing to your standards. Sweet. And this is, this is a quick rundown of how to create a Cube app inside of Cube Cloud. And I hope you liked it. If you end up having any more questions, feel free to reach out. If you have any ideas for future tutorials, we're here for you. Um, and that's pretty much it. See you next time. Bye.